In today's text, it is incumbent that we truly understand it, for many have used it in order to point out the doctrine of purgatory, pointing out that the rich man is in purgatory, but there is nowhere in the text that implies this man was suffering in purgatory. Indeed, Abraham tells him that between him and where Abraham is, there is a great abyss, that is, one that cannot be traversed. And there is that great abyss, as Abraham points out precisely, so no one can come from where he is to where Abraham was. And so, ultimately, we are dealing with here with, with the four last things, death, judgment, heaven, and hell. The rich man was condemned for all eternity to hell because he lacked charity towards his neighbor in this life and would not even permit the poor to eat the scraps of his table. Lazarus is in heaven not because Lazarus was poor, but because in his poverty Lazarus did not complain and inordinately desire that which the rich man had. For often we don't understand, but the poor can be as greedy as the rich, and sometimes the rich can be as poor as Lazarus was. And so, ultimately, it was the exercise of virtue. It was not the rich man's wealth that condemned him in and of itself. It was how he used it, and ultimately how he failed to use it by exercising charity towards his neighbor. And so, it is a startling and stark reality that the Lord is pointing out here the existence of hell and that if we do not do his will in this life, we will ultimately be tormented as the rich man was for all eternity in the life to come. And so, often we use that excuse that if only God would tell me directly, our Lord deals with that at the end, for the rich man had Moses and the prophets, that is, he had the teaching authority set up by God in the Old Testament, and that is sufficient for all men to come to proper knowledge of God and the ways of salvation. In the New Covenant, we have the new prophets, that is, the Pope and the Apostles united with him, and so it is sufficient that we receive from Mother, Holy Mother Church that which is necessary for our salvation, that truth by which we must, as it were, believe if we are to save our souls. And so we must turn to Holy Mother Church, especially to strengthen our resolve to turn to her during this holy season of Lent, so that we are fed by her the proper doctrine for the human soul, so that here we may too work out our salvation in that spirit of poverty with which Lazarus had. That is, he did not complain and he did not desire inordinately that which his neighbor possessed, he only desired that which was necessary for his sustenance, but even in not receiving that, he did not lash out in any form of uncharity towards the rich man, and indeed, it is a true lesson that perhaps our modern society could truly learn, for often we see very clearly in our own day and age those who go out into the streets in order ultimately to steal from those who have worked hard in order to get, a, as the expression goes, in order to get ahead in this life. It is the responsibility of those who have to, to, to use that which God has given them by the dictates of charity, but when we see them failing, it is not the responsibility of the poor to try to manipulate and to try to organize society in a way that ultimately is nothing else than a justification for stealing, that is, from taking from one which does not belong to him. And so, ultimately, what our Lord is basically telling us is that whether we are rich or poor, whether then the salvation of our soul depends on, on how much we pray for the grace of God in order to remain poor in spirit at all times, so that even if rich, then we, we, give, uh, we give aid to our neighbor, and if poor, we accept that aid with, with true charity, not desiring any more than that which is necessary for the sustenance of the human family. And so we, 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 we resolve during this season of Lent 
to beg also that all souls come to exercise, to, to embrace that witness which is given to the world by the church, that is, her holy doctrine, her pure doctrine, the doctrine that teaches what charity truly is and ultimately what is the final course of mankind. And so we reflect more earnestly during the season of Lent on the four last things, death, judgment, heaven, and hell, precisely to strengthen our resolve to desire nothing but heaven for which God has created us and to do all that is necessary in the way of sacrifice and suffering in this life in order that we may acquire that because ultimately we know it is not true riches are not to be found in this earth for true riches are to be found in our heavenly home. And so let us strive always, especially with the help of all the angels and saints, and especially of the Blessed Virgin Mary, who exercised charity towards her neighbor in the highest way by receiving that which is truly precious to the human soul, that is, the Son of God as her Son, so that she could ultimately give him to the whole world in this life in order that they may truly possess him for all eternity in the life to come.